Hello champions. Hi friends. How are you all? I'm sure you're doing great. Rocking as always. Studying well. Yeah. Now this small video is just a continuation of the topics in numbers. I have already uploaded three videos of numbers. So in this one small part, which is like something extra, I would like to cover yeah, mainly about two things. One is divisibility of algebraic expressions. And in case of certs and indices, how to compare the two or more certs compare means which is bigger, which is smaller like that. Okay. All right. So here we go. Algebraic expressions, algebraic expressions, something like this. See, you have already seen this formula in the very first video of algebra. Algebra is zero in that I had given the list of 18 formulae in that it was the last one, 17th one actually. This could be written as a plus b plus c times or multiplied by this whole thing plus 3abc. Now, if I just shift 3abc on this side, so can you see the right hand side is completely in the form of product of two numbers. So when I say product of two numbers means, for example, if I write six as two into three, so what do we call two and three as the factors of six, right? And this is only, we call it as factorization or factorized version or factorized form. Yeah. So this entire thing could be factorized as a plus B plus C into that second bracket. Okay. Now just imagine if that RHS needs to be zero. So product of two numbers is zero product. When is that possible? Correct. One of them or both of them can be zero. So it is either a plus b plus c is zero. Now when is, uh, so if a plus b plus c is zero, yeah, in that case, this a cube plus b cube plus c cube minus three a b c is equal to zero. Yes, friends. So one more step. So a cube plus b cube plus c cube can simply be written as 3 into a into b into c into 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 means what? Factorized form, isn't it? So some of these three cubes could be factorized as three times a into b into c. For example, um, some big numbers like the 17 cube plus 12 cube minus let's say 29 cube. So if you see carefully here, a is 17, B is 12, C is minus 29, isn't it? So A plus B plus C over here is zero. So if they are, if they are asking for the factors of this number, so you don't have to really find these three cubes, then add and subtract, get the result, some big number, and then factorize, and then you'll come to know what are the factors. But here you can do it straight away. This is three into A into B into C. Of course, you can ignore negative sign. So these are the factors 17, 29, three and other factors of 12. So this helps us to get the factors quickly. If you can observe this smartly. So whenever there are three individual cubes, please look for this without fail and then only think something else if it doesn't work out. Okay. Second case that second bracket can be zero. Then also this RHS is zero. Now, when is the second bracket zero? When we have A equal to B equal to C. So when all these three numbers are same, just visualize. Yeah. If I put all of them as suppose X, so X square plus X square plus X square minus X into X. So X square minus X into X. So X square minus X into X. So X square. If A, B, C are equal, then the second bracket will become zero, right? Then also A cube plus B cube plus C cube minus three B C equal to zero. So you can get this, this step. Yeah. So whenever you see this kind of algebraic expression, wherein you saw three cubes, then go for this. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead. Now the algebraic expression of this form, a to the power n minus b to the power, same n. And there's minus n in between. This could be... Yeah, don't go for such big expression. Just visualize or uh, what is that called as simulate in a smaller scenario simulation. We know this formula very well, right? Friends, a cube minus b cube. Can you see right hand side is in the product form means factorized form. 
So a cube minus b cube could be factorized as a minus b into a square plus a b plus b square. So I can say for sure that a minus b is definitely a factor, isn't it? Yes. Now, if I go for even powers, for example, a raised to four minus b to the power four, this could be factorized like this, and this a square minus b square could again be factorized like a minus b into a plus b. What is the learning? Now, the learning is if the power is odd, a sure shot factor is a minus b. If the power is even, apart from a minus b, which will always be there. You will get one more fixed and sure shot factor that is a plus b. Yeah. So, for example, if they tell me fifty three to the power sixteen minus let's say forty seven to the power sixteen is definitely divisible by power is even. A is the base minus b. So, difference of the bases and sum of the bases into something else. So we can say for sure that this is definitely divisible by six and hundred. Correct. All the factors of these numbers will be there for sure. You do not have to really find such big number, fifty-three to the power sixteen. Insane, right? So this is how we can use this knowledge over here. If they say, ah, uh, for example, twenty-five to the power. One seventy nine minus twelve to the power one seventy nine. We can't find such big value, but at least we can say for sure that it is definitely divisible by twenty five minus twelve. For sure, means thirteen will be there in this result for sure as a factor. So whatever this big answer is, it will definitely be divisible by thirteen. It will come in the table of thirteen. That is how you should use this knowledge. All right. So this was about minus sign in between. Let's explore about plus sign in between. Okay, I hope you understood. You are noting it down properly. Great. Now, in case of plus sign, friends, you just need to be a bit careful. That just first take the example, a known, a very famous example, which you know already. A cube plus B cube is A plus B times A square minus B square plus B square. So A plus B is a fixed factor. Correct. In case of even powers, something like this I can't find. A square plus B square. We can't factorize this in terms of real numbers. A raised to four plus B raised to four. We can't factorize this. Not possible. So in these cases, we can't say about a factor being there or not. Sure, sure factor we can't find. समझ रहे? Okay. But the power odd था. Means for example, अगर ऐसा होता, a to the power five plus b to the power five, still ultimately I can factorize in this format that a plus b into something आएगा. तो a plus b will always be there. Yeah. Again, something similar. Seventeen raised to one seventy nine plus twelve raised to one seventy nine. Power is odd. Plus sign is there in between, so it will definitely be divisible by seventeen plus twelve into something. Means twenty nine will be there for sure as a factor. Okay, friends, understanding. And if it is like seventy raised to one seventy six plus twelve raised to or eleven raised to one seventy six, we can't say about the factor directly. Okay, unless we know the number. <laughs> okay. So this much about algebraic expression, divisibility of algebraic expression mainly, you should know. Let's summarize this uh, expression of this format. If n is even and if n is odd, so if n is even, this will have two factors for sure: a minus b and a plus b. I hope you agree with me. Yes, friends. And if n is odd, it will be definitely divisible by a minus b. So a minus b is always there. For a plus b to be also there, power should be even. Now, in case of plus, here we can't say anything for sure. Can't comment. But if the power is odd, we can say that a plus b will definitely be a factor. This is the crux of the matter. Okay. 
Great. Just remember a cube minus b cube, a square minus b square, a cube plus b cube. So you can always derive this at any moment. Okay. I hope you have noted, you have understood. Thank you so much. As discussed in the beginning, friends, the second topic here, the small topic is comparison of the certs. Okay. So let's see. Square root of 64 versus square root of 81. I am sure everybody is very, very comfortable in this, in this situation. Square root of 64, you know, is 8 and square root of 81 is 9. So 9 is bigger than 8. Yeah. So in this way, I could comfortably compare these two. Similarly, cube root of 64 versus square root of 64. We know this also very well. Cube root of 64 is 4. Square root of 64 is 8, isn't it? So 8 is bigger than 4. So in this first case, orders were same. I hope you remember the order. Yeah, so both of them are having the order is 2. Square root, square root, so order is 2. In this case, the radicands are same, 64, 64. But orders were different. In first case, radicands were different. But at least one of the two, that is either the order or the radicand. One of these two were same. So we were in a comfortable position to compare. Yeah. But if both of them are different, something like this, square root of two, cube root of three, fourth root of six. Now, now what to do? Now how to compare? Listen. So let's con convert this uncomfortable situation into a comfortable one. So that we can compare easily. And what is our comfortable situation? Either the order or the radicand should be same. Making the radicand same is a big task. Let's forget it. So we should focus simply on making the orders equal. So two, three, and four, all of them should become same. Become same means what? Think of visualize the table of two, table of three, table of four. You can see 12 is the number which is there in all the three tables, which we also call it as LCM, isn't it? So now see this magical line, the wow thought, raise the power to 12 throughout. This is our wow thought. If I raise the power to 12 throughout, so square root of two to the power 12, cube root of three to the power 12, fourth root of six to the power 12. So what do you see? Now the fractional powers will be converted to simple numbers, integral powers or natural numbers. But 2 raised to 12 by 2, 3 raised to 12 by 3, 6 raised to 12 by 4, which you can see will become 2 to the power 6, 3 to the power 4 and 6 to the power 3. So we could easily compare now. 81, 3 to the power 4 is biggest, isn't it? So 64, 81, 216. Actually, they are in the order only. 64 is smallest, followed by 81, followed by 216. Yeah. So this is how we can compare. All right. Understood? So this was about comparison of the certs. Okay, friends. I hope you understood both these topics well. First one was divisibility of algebraic expressions. Second is comparison of certs. Happy learning. Keep learning. Keep growing. Thank you so much. See you in class.